So I wanted to do something just a little bit different on this trip and I started thinking about it and came up with this idea. What do people do when they've won like 50 or even a hundred million dollars in a lottery say? You know, like they're brand new to all this money. Probably most people say they go on a vacation somewhere. And that brings the next question, where do they go and what do they do? Turns out if you ask that question and you Google it, you come up with places like Cabo San Lucas, which is where I am right now. So I hooked up with Jason, otherwise known as the King of Cabo, right? Is, I've been told that. You've been told that? Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, and that's why we're here. Now, we've arrived here in Cabo and I came up to Jason with this great idea. We've come up with the idea of having the top five things to do in Cabo San Lucas. And one of the great things about Cabo is you don't even have to say the whole name. You just say Cabo and everybody knows what you're talking about because it's that famous. It's certainly just a, as a single name internationally recognized as one of the most cultured and diverse beach destinations around the world. Cabo really has far more to offer in terms of the luxury segment and at the same time a little bit of something for everybody. So you have some incredible family resorts, some very exclusive upscale resorts, and a little bit of everything in between. Listen, let's tackle that top five ultimate things to do in Cabo San Lucas. When do you want to start, right now? Sure, let's okay, do let's it, go. let's dive in. I'm with Sidi Omar here in, just outside of Cabo San Lucas. We're about to go ride a couple of camels in the, well, I guess it's like a desert here, probably fairly familiar to what you have back home, right? Absolutely, the, the, actually it's a desert. The only difference that here we have the ocean. We got an ocean here. Yeah, so I guess the first and obvious question, how did you get here? I'm from uh, north of Niger. Niger is in West Africa. I come here to help. Uh, oh, okay. With Cabo Adventure uh, Camel so operation. Here we are. When I come here, I get attached to the camel and the company. And camels are the most noble creature in yeah. the world, and they are very happy to make people happy here. Right. But if you ride the camel for 20 minutes along the beach, you get good energy, you get happiness. So sort of therapeutic. Yeah. Now, listen, this is a big question I think everybody has at one point. What's, the, what's up with the uh, one hump, two hump? What's that all about? There is only one hump and two hump. The f one hump are called dromedary. Yeah. They are meant to live in high climate, okay. like Saharan Desert, Middle East. Yeah. And the second hump are called Bactrian. Yeah. They are made for cold climate, like uh, Mongolia, Afghanistan, oh. uh, China, you know. Oh, okay. okay. So one hump, hot. Mm -hmm. Two, two hump, cold. What do I need to know? before I get on a camel. It's just, you know, to be cautioned, to be safe, that yeah. keep in mind that you ride in a camel yeah. and always hold your camel seat tight. Yeah. During the ride, follow the camel movement. It's like you're dancing to music. Now, how far can you go on a camel in a day? Professional yeah. rider, you can hold, you can ride 60 kilometers. So, yeah, okay, so 40 miles, let's say. So when you, you're, you finish your camel ride, what do you do then? Yeah, because we're sitting next to something. Uh, what we do after a long camel ride, we have a green tea with honey and uh, sweet. sweet. Yeah, I would think of the sweet. So uh, if you guys don't mind, we're going to share green tea with okay. you. That's a great idea. Nice and sweet. Salud. Yeah. Boy, after a hard day on a camel bumping around all day, this has got to feel really good, huh? It relaxes yeah. you. For CNN, in Cabo San Lucas with my friend Sadiq Omar on the camels. This is Percy Von Lipinski. Which way to Tijuana? Well, I've had this Jeep for a few days now and it's great for getting around. I mean, potholes and all on the roads here, but going out in the desert, off-roading, 
Well, that's a whole different story. Did I hear off-road? You did hear off-road. That's what I want to try. I know just the guy. This is the guy you want to talk to. This is him. We're in the home of off-road racing. I mean, this yeah. is where it all started, right? So you're driving down the highway. Do you have sort of dreams of going off of that road? You just bet. the heck with it. I'm just going to go through the sand. And be careful when you're about, or else <laughs> learn how to drive on there with Norm here and Cabo San Lucas. Yeah. Actually, we're building a car right now. Yeah, get ready for Let's the race. Let's check this out. All right, how are you doing? What's that? Th oh, that's the off-road shake. Yeah. Can we do that again? One. That was yeah, cool. Sure. All right. Yeah. This is an off-road vehicle? It's uh, upside down right now mm -hmm. because he has to get the right angle to weld entirely. Now, are you an off-roader yourself or do you just build them or do you do both? Oh, uh, we do both. You know what this reminds me of? You know, West Coast Chopper with Jesse James and uh, Sandra yeah. Bullock. Because have they ever actually been in your shop? Not they anymore. We don't care about <laughs> Jesse. What about Sandra? Has she ever uh, been here? No, not yet, but she can come anytime for a free lesson. Sandra! Come down and see Victor in Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> I'll be and here. You'll be waiting? Well, before Sandra gets to ride in this thing, do you think there's any chance I can go? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can go into an off-road type one. It's really nearby, you know? That's right. the cool thing about Cabo. It's just, it's around the corner. My life is in your hands. Let's go, buddy. Okay, literally. I guess the key to a safe off-road ride is get really strapped in good. Yeah, like you have to pull them as, as hard as you can. Oh, you got to pull it down? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All four of them. Whoa. Oh yeah, there's some uh, horsepower in there. Were you just praying? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get myself in it. The things I do for you. Oh <laughs> 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 yeah, right, here we go. It's pretty smooth considering how rough it is here on the road. Victor, you build them good. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, our first big hill. Let's get it. Whoa! Ah! Oh, so when you're doing the, say, a race like the Baja 1000, there's a real strategy involved. Think of it as a test. You yeah. study a lot for a for a test. We prepare a lot for the race. Yeah. But as soon as the test begins, in this case race, uh, you're by your own. You have to do the best you can with whatever you got. Well, I've just arrived. This is Ernesto, how are you? Welcome to Cabo San Lucas. Thank you, man. What's happening? I'm going to take you to Grand Sol Mark Hotel in James Bond style. <laughs> well, you know, I'm dressed like James Bond. Have you ever taken anybody dressed in a suit like this before? No. No? Okay, well, it's gonna be a first time today. You've got an ultralight here. Tell me a little bit about this ultralight you've got. Yes, this is a... It's a tandem. Yes. So usually it's not like the ones where you sit side by side, one sits on top of the other. Uh, main thing I gotta know is it's got a good engine, right? Yes. How many horsepower? 66. We're gonna need every one of those 66 horsepower. Yes. So make sure that throttle is working good. You know what? We're wasting time. Let's get in this thing and go, okay? Okay. All right, we're on. Flying by ultralight is an exhilarating, fun way to travel around Cabo, providing an incredible view of the Baja South Coast. With the wind in your hair and houses showing up as minuscule ants in the face of a vast and brilliant Mexican cape, this is truly something to be experienced. And it's easily one of the best activities Cabo San Lucas has to offer. Now down here in Cabo San Lucas on the very tip of Baja California, it's all about marine life and this is a major way station for whales. Every winter, countless whales travel thousands of miles south from their feeding grounds of the Arctic Ocean to bathe in the warm, shallow waters of the Baja Mexico Peninsula. As expected, this creates a spectacle of brilliant, majestic whales for all to see. 
Now, one of the things about whales that's almost caused their extinction is they're very predictable. They do the same things year after year. Now it helps a lot because that same trait of repeating patterns year after year has helped biologists continue to track whales, and in fact, their numbers have started to increase. Gray whales, blue whales, humpback whales, and orcas are among the many of the large seafaring mammals that can be seen here each year. In Cabo San Lucas, the whales act in a dazzling theater of nature for those willing to take a boat ride out several miles from the coast. Almost every day, whales are plentiful in the clear blue water. Whale watching in Cabo is an experience unlike anything else in the world as the warm coastal waters welcome you to witness the lives of some of the Earth's largest and most beautiful creatures up close and personal in an amazing display of nature. Without a doubt, the whales of Cabo are not to be missed.